المسيح قام Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Christos anesti. So hands. As I welcome you this holy Sunday to this holy church. If you happen to be here for the first time, we are so thrilled that you are here. God await your presence. Today is the birthday of a very special young man who I've seen him every Sunday in this church. He's 16. And I think that is a wonderful birthday for Tariq. Don't be embarrassed, but I wanted you to know that I care. This morning, I will speak longer than usual because you get used to me speaking 10 to 11 minutes. And Father James makes a difference. He does speak more detailed than I am. Each one has his own gift. But I'm going to speak a little bit longer than usual because I want to address two issues. One is the Sunday of Samaritan. What does that mean? You know, the gospel read by Deacon Dennis and, and what it's all about. But the second issue why people obsessed with the end of the world? Why? It comes when it comes. So I need your attention in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Jesus said in this morning gospel to this woman, who wanted no one to know her, no one to realize that she count. She came to draw water at noon in the hottest moment of the day from Jacob's well. Jacob's well today is in Nablus, and there is a church that's built on it. He said, if you only knew if you only knew God, God will give you a living water. A living water. My dearly beloved, the water of this world does not quench our thirst. It's only the Holy Spirit that will give us a true living water. Because the power of the Holy Spirit changed the heart. And when it changed the heart, it changed your outlook to life. Many try to change things on their own, fighting battle, trying to fix every ill in this world. And they become exhausted. The saint of the church says, Change your heart first, and a thousand other hearts will be changed. Don't sweat it. You exhaust yourself over nothing. Seek first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added to you. Let's go back to the story. The Samaritan woman was a woman of ill repute that wanted to draw water during a moment when no one is there so no one will talk to her. And here comes confronted with Christ and said to her, give me a drink. As women throughout history as wise, 
she looked at him and said, how dare, first of all, you talk to me. Next, how can you give me water? You don't even have a bucket. Women are very perceptive. Women are brilliant. They either can build a home or destroy a home. And there is two women in this world, Eve, the first mother who entered a state of sin, or the second Eve, the Virgin Mary, who calls us to her son Jesus. If we only knew, and she said, Lord, give me that water so I don't will not be exhausted every day. And he began to tell her, go call your husband, your boyfriend, your former lover. And she said, are you a prophet? How come you know everything about me? Well, he said, in a way, I created you. I knew you from your mother's womb. I knew your behavior. You don't have to pretend. And then everybody came. This woman went out and says, come. Come and see someone who loved me, knowing that I am a sinful person, and redeemed me, and named me Fortini. Samaritan woman, the church gave her a name. Fortini, that means embraced with the light of Christ changed every Sunday we come as sinful and we leave the church redeemed called by Christ to a new way of life not the same old thing you need to make a change so the Samaritan woman is a symbol of what is the love of God to a sinful world always calling us to renew. The second issue is that in the last month, I was stopped in hospital, at stores, at Costco, at Starbucks. And people see me wearing a collar and said, are you a man of the cloth? I would say at least I have some clothes on. I don't know what does that mean, that you're a man with the, of a cloth. Everybody has a cloth. I said, you mean I'm a priest? Yeah, that's two, she said. What do you think about May 22nd or 1st? Is the world going to end? I said, yeah, the world will end someday. But don't wait for the world to end. Live your life as God wants you to do. The question, why we're so obsessed with the end of time? And here's the answer. My dearly beloved in the Lord, if we only knew how much God loves us, we live every day in his love. The world was not interested in knowing Christ, but many were engaging in predicting and outguessing God that May 21st or 22nd will be a judgment day by a 94 years old preacher. All last week, people sold some of their home, left their family, and went out in the street of America, pronouncing the day of judgment. Yes, here in America, many are interested when the old world will end, rather than living good in the world. This is not the last prediction. 
and it will be already a new prediction for next year. There are a group of religion, cult, such as Jehovah Witness, Mormonism, an extreme form of Christianity. They use the Bible to promote one own agenda, whatever their agenda. Drum up customers, they're motivated by fear. They're motivated by punishment and hate. They're motivated by reward. And they're motivated by authority and reward. And they miss out on the promise of salvation. Jesus said the church is not for the saint, the church for sinners. For sinners. I have come to call you all to repentance, says the Lord. Yes. And the reason each read and interpret the Bible on his own or her own. We are so blessed to sit in this pews, to be in this church, whatever your reason, whether you came out of obligation or for the coffee hour, and a lot come for the coffee hour. It's okay. Whatever your reason, you're sitting in this pews, you are established by Christ, but you didn't know his living water. This is the church that preached by the disciple, maintain its teaching of the gospel, celebrate and live life with all its circumstances. We celebrate death. We celebrate crisis. We celebrate all what comes our way. As the gospel says, rejoice in the Lord. As I say to you, rejoice. The Lord is at hand. All our event in life, sickness, cancer, mountain that we cannot climb. If we feel God is with us, we are more than conqueror. Here we worship. Here in the church, the world begins every Sunday. And the world is celebrated and the world ends. And I believe in the resurrection of the dead every Sunday and the world to come. And then we go out to the world. But the world is full of false prophets. One time, Jesus wanted to teach his disciples that the world does always exist with evil and goodness, with good people and bad people, with good priests and bad priests, with false prophet and good prophet. So his disciple came to him and says, Lord, we've seen a field that was planted with good fruit, but the enemy at night came and planted bad fruit of thorn. Are we to cut off and pluck out this bad fruit and thorn? He said, no. If you do that, you take the good with the bad. Wait. At the end of time, at the harvest, Jesus said, the farmer will take them all and will take the fruit and present it to God, and the evil will be judged. So don't try to change the world to become the way you want to see the world. Change yourself. 
and the world will change. Yes, the world is full of false prophets. We live in the world that people are affected by Hollywood and it is movie production, blind leading the blind, a world always lived in fear, instead living with God. As the gospel says, if Christ is with us, who could be against us? Yes, many people live in constant fear that the world is going to end and they will die in 211 or 212 and they live the impossible way of life. That is no reason to do good in their eyes. That is no reason to hope in their eyes. That is no reason to go to school, to plan, and to change in their eyes. Everything is loom and gloom and doom. What occupy them? What occupy modern society? What? There are so many churches today, and they probably have 10,000 people, more than we ever have, singing song about the end of time. It became a popular music. Many prepare by buying food and equipment to prepare themselves for the cataclysmic time, for a time of catastrophe. What good all the food will do you if the world will end? You're not going to eat it. What good all the equipment of safety you need if the world is going to end? You and I are to call by God to live life worthy of Christ and his holy church and learn the decision that God chose the world. And when he created, he said it was good. Now you are to make it better. You are to make it better. The world will end when God decides the world will end. Let me remind you of what Jesus said. He said, no one knows about that day or the hour, not even the angel in heaven, nor the son, but only the father when that moment will come. Yes, that is the answer to his holy disciple. So what is the Orthodox Christian perspective on the end of the world. Number one, the world was taught and it will end from the day of creation. It was taught. Number two, you are to live not as darkness, but as the light, as the salt of the earth, responsible, accountable, loving, not only to yourself, but to your neighbor, celebrating the Eucharist by fasting, by prayer, by worshiping, to comfort others in time of need. Number th three, God made you, God made you to figure out what is the challenges of this world? How can you contribute to this world? How can you make the world a better place? Every day we have doctors, scientists, financial planner, engineer, musician, create something good to make the world a better place. Number four, 
you are to live not in fear, but you are to live courageously by facing trial and tribulation as a good soldier, not in fear, but in hope, in love, in steadfastness. Yes, we are to pray, to be saved, and to learn what God can give, eternal life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Messiah come. Christ is risen. Christos Anesti.